When it comes to aviation, this is the most profligate form of, of energy consumption that we have of carbon emissions per hour of activity. There's nothing that we can do that consumes more energy than, than, than flying um, any, any, you know, in any single hour. Um, and if we're serious about climate change, because there are no good alternatives in the short to medium term, we have to curtail the amount of flying that we do. Now again, it is interesting here, but at the time, at the currently, flying is, is carried out by a relatively small proportion of our population who fly regularly. And it is those that, will, that should be taking the lion's share of the cuts in the amount of flying that we do. So we can still have possibly some aviation, but much more limited amount of access to aviation. But that needs to be spread more evenly rather than actually just a small cohort of people flying very regularly and making arguments for expansion on the basis of the ca a family who occasionally fly to Benidorm for a holiday once every two years. So at the moment we are very clear that flying is something that a particular group in society, relatively wealthy of us, group of us in society, do very, very regularly indeed. Um, and the emissions from that we cannot curtail through technology. Uh, it's growing very rapidly. And if we're serious about climate change, we need to bring those emissions down very rapidly. And that means that we cannot have any expansion of aviation in the UK. And if we're really serious about the climate change targets we have set, we would have to seriously consider um, actually reducing the amount of flying we have. So it's demand management. This is very unpopular with the industry, very unpopular with those of us that fly regularly. But we're going to have to seriously de manage demand in aviation whilst we wait for technologies to try and um, substitute. Um, for this very high carbon form of activity. Um, at the moment, those technologies are a long, long way off. And in the interim, then we just have to, the message is very simple, we have to curtail the amount of flying that we do. I think we did quite a lot of work on separating the two and then the implications of it and their relative proportion of the economy. You know, if you look at something like the UK, for every two pound, every pound that, f sorry, every pound that flies in the tourist money, about two pound 73 flew out. So you know, from a tourist point of view, you don't let people fly out. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, keep, yeah, keep them at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, Ken Livingston said that. He didn't give a damn about it. London Airport. He said, like, don't give a damn about the tourists. You can, the tourists can just be stopped flying from Heathrow we just, we just, as long as we allow the business flights. And actually, talking to business communities, they're, actually, they're much more concerned now about flying because it takes up so much time yeah. of their... You know, you've got someone who's paid a lot of money in the company you know, with all the other things around them, and they spend a huge amount of time just flying somewhere mm -hmm. for some bloody meeting. You think, well, actually, that's a hell of a cost. So as, as you mentioned, the recession has put a lot of pressure on companies to th rethink um, how they use aviation. They do more remote conferencing. Yeah, yeah a lot more remote conferencing, yeah. yeah. But we have to be quite careful with that because that can, a bit like emails and else, it can actually then have a rebound effect, which means you just do more physical flying because you, you open up a wider array of contacts. Yeah, so there are, yeah. I mean, that's the real issue. I mean, people say, well, I use emails now. Yeah, we, we, use, yeah. we use more virtual communication and we use more physical communication. And there's probably some link between those two.